Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to look at exchange rate risk, both in terms of what it is and how it can be managed. As was discussed in the Sources of Finance presentation, there is a direct link between the return required by investors and the risk that they face. Accordingly, it is essential that businesses both identify and attempt to manage risk, of which exchange rates is one example, in order to keep the cost of finance as low as possible. Specifically, this presentation will cover exchange rate mechanics and terminology, types of exchange rate risk, managing translation risk, managing economic risk, and managing transaction risk. Let's look at each of these in turn. Exchange rate mechanics and terminology. An exchange rate is effectively the cost of buying one currency with another. For example, a rate of $2 to the pound indicates that if you have one pound, you can use it to buy $2, notwithstanding any transaction costs. You have exchanged your pounds for dollars. The same relationship could be expressed as 0.5 pounds to one dollar, and either way, the rate at which the currency could be exchanged now is referred to as the spot rate or spot. An added complication, however, is that banks or similar institutions offer different rates depending on whether you are buying or selling a currency. Accordingly, rather than seeing the rate expressed as $2 as above, you may see it quoted as $1.97 to $2.03. The difference between the numbers is called the spread, and this is part of the profit that the bank makes on the arrangement. If you think of a bank as a trading organisation, they will buy at a low price and sell at a high price. Unfortunately, this means that businesses will buy at a high price and sell at a low price, the exact opposite of what they would like to do. Let's look at an example. Imagine you are a UK business that has one million dollars that it wishes to exchange for pounds and the spot rate it has been quoted is $1.97 to $2.03 to the pound. Firstly, you should always consider the exchange from the perspective of your domestic currency. So, in this case, as a UK company, we need to think in terms of pounds, we are going to use the dollars to buy pounds. We will buy at a high price, the opposite of what we would like to do. And we will receive £492,610.84, being $1 million divided by 2.03, the higher of the two rates. Finally, if the spot rate of $2 moves to $1.90, buying dollars has become more expensive for a UK company. One pound will now only buy $1.90 compared to $2 previously. And the dollar is said to have strengthened against the pound. Saying the pound has weakened against the dollar would be exactly the same thing. Types of exchange rate risk. There are broadly three types of exchange risk. In mathematical terms, risk simply means a variability in the possible outcomes, and the wider the range of possible outcomes, the higher the risk is said to be. In this regard, therefore, a currency moving in favour of the organisation would be a risk in the same way that a move against would be. Notwithstanding this fact, the word risk 
is used in everyday language in a negative way. We only talk about the risk of something bad happening. And even in business, we tend to worry more about the downside. Management of the risk will be covered later in the presentation, however the risks themselves are explained below. Translation risk is the risk that the value of an overseas asset will change when the asset is translated into a company's domestic currency for inclusion in its accounts. For example, Imagine you hold an asset worth $1.2 million. At the start of the year, when the exchange rate was $3 to the pound, the asset value in the UK accounts was £400,000, $1.2 million divided by 3. At the end of the year, when the asset value was $4 to the pound, the asset value appears to have fallen to £300,000, 1.2 divided by 4, a loss of £100,000. Economic risk is the risk that the currency in a country where we operate will weaken, thereby reducing the equivalent performance expressed in domestic currency terms. For example, Imagine a business makes a profit of $15 million each year in two consecutive years. The average exchange rate was $1.5 to the pound in year one and $2 to the pound in year two, producing a profit expressed in pounds of £10 million in year one whilst only £7.5 million in year two. Although in dollar terms the performance has been maintained, expressed in pounds, the performance appears lower in year two than in year one. Transaction risk is the risk that the value of a transaction denominated in a foreign currency will change due to exchange rate movements between the contract being agreed and monies being transferred. For example, a UK company entered into a contract to sell goods for $900,000 when the exchange rate was $1.5 to the pound, i.e. the equivalent of £600,000. By the time the contract is completed and money is transferred, the exchange rate has moved to $2 to the pound. Accordingly, although the contract goes according to plan and generates sales of $900,000, in sterling terms, sales have fallen to £450,000. It is worth a reminder that whilst all of the examples above show a downside risk, i.e. a worsening of the position, companies could just as easily benefit from exchange rate movements. Managing translation risk. The easiest way to manage translation risk is to match foreign assets with foreign liabilities, i.e. use foreign currency finance to purchase the assets. The impact of this is that if the asset falls in value in domestic currency terms, the liability will also fall in value, thereby offsetting the loss in asset value. Managing economic risk. To avoid exposure to an economic risk, a company would want to avoid entering an economy where it was anticipated that the currency might weaken. Obviously over an extended period of time, currency values will tend to ebb and flow, thereby making such an approach difficult. Notwithstanding this fact, in the short term, the following factors might all indicate that a weakening of the currency was likely. High inflation in country A relative to country B would indicate that the currency of country A would weaken 
relative to B. This phenomenon can be used to estimate future rates and the exchange rate in one year's time can be calculated as the spot rate multiplied by 1 plus the inflation rate in the foreign currency and divided by 1 plus the inflation rate in the home country. This is referred to as purchasing power parity. For example, if the spot rate is $2 to the pound, US inflation is 5% and UK inflation is 3%, the expected rate in one year is 2 multiplied by 1.05 divided by 1.03 which equals approximately 2.04. As discussed in the circular flow of income presentation, high inflation rates often lead to high interest rates, and the latter is another indicator that a currency may weaken. Further, interest rate parity theory can be used to calculate forward rates covered later, in the same way that purchasing power parity is used to predict future exchange rates. The difference between the two is that whilst the latter uses inflation rates, the former uses interest rates. Finally, a balance of payments deficit, the situation where imports are higher than exports, or high government borrowing, are both indicators that a country is not doing well and could result in its currency weakening. Managing transaction risk. There are broadly two categories of risk management and these can be thought of as internal, i.e. the company can achieve on their own, and external, i.e. the company will use derivatives and other financial products. Internal approaches for an exporter receiving foreign currency include trading in your domestic currency. This does not remove the risk, however, it does transfer it to your customer. The ability or otherwise to achieve this is dependent upon the relative bargaining power of the two parties. Leading. This refers to encouraging your customer to pay more quickly so that funds can be received and exchanged before rates change too much. Lagging. This involves delaying the exchange of monies received in the hope that the exchange rate will move in your favour. Netting and matching involves creating payments in foreign currencies so that monies received do not need to be exchanged. External approaches include forward contracts, money market hedges and futures and options and these are discussed in more detail below. Forward contracts are an agreement to buy or sell a fixed amount of currency on an agreed date at a rate that is agreed now. They work in exactly the same way as an exchange at spot, however there is usually a larger spread between the buy and sell rates quoted. They are easy and quick to arrange, are available in many currencies and available for more than a year ahead. Conversely, they are non-cancellable, have to be honoured on a specific date, and the rates quoted may be unattractive. A money market hedge involves buying or selling the currency relating to the transaction now at spot, so that the exchange rate achieved is known. More specifically, for a currency receipt, the process is as follows. Borrow an amount of foreign currency today, 
equal to the amount due to be received less the interest that will accrue on the borrowing. Use the currency borrowed to buy domestic currency at spot and deposit the domestic currency acquired for the period up to the date for the receipt of the transaction currency. This will earn interest to offset part of the cost of the currency borrowing. The net receipt under both approaches should be very similar. A future is a derivative product that is separate from the business transaction giving rise to the risk. If a business is expecting to receive an amount of foreign currency in the future, this will be converted at the prevailing rate at that time. The risk is that they will not know what the exchange rate will be and therefore the domestic equivalent of the currency. The company will be concerned that if the foreign currency weakens, the effective receipt in its domestic currency will fall. To offset this, the company will enter into a separate futures contract to buy domestic currency in the future. This contract is set up in such a way that the company will benefit if the foreign currency weakens. The net effect is that a loss on the transaction is offset by a gain on the future and vice versa. The company will need to deposit funds when they buy the future to cover any losses that may arise. Options are very similar to futures, however, the company has an option whether or not to exercise the contract. This means that they will use gains on the option to offset losses on the transaction, but will ignore the option if the transaction shows a gain. This approach allows the company to avoid the downside while still benefiting from any upside. However, a premium is paid to obtain an option and this may make it an expensive option. Thank you.